Oh yeah, boys. Game number one. The music is a bit loud. Oh yeah, game number one. In the top right, we have our boy Bulia from Pigpen, the Red Zerg. And in the bottom left, we have the Orange Terran, our boy from Beastie Boys, it is Yepen. So this is going to be Clan War, a best of seven. Uh, it will be all kill system. Now, for people that know, don't know, all kill system is, uh, for example, if uh, Bulia would win here, he would not uh, be replaced by another player from Big Pen. He would stay, and then we would bring out another player to play Bulia. So then if Bulia won again, then he would stay and have a 2-0 lead for his team and then play the third game. So, yeah, basically it's, it's a winner stays. As far as the players go, until we uh, until one team reaches four wins. But yeah, we'll see how the clan war goes. Again, guys, this is the masters clan war. So most of these guys are master two. Um, some of them are master three. And actually, Yepin today was master two, but literally 30 minutes before clan war, he got masters one. And I wasn't sure if he would be allowed to play, but uh, we asked Bully and he said it's okay. So here we are. Um, But yeah, the, the, the conversation we had earlier about the, uh, or earlier, like a minute ago, about gaming companies, is I understand that a lot of these games are early access and, and you know, and all of that, and they can't really, you know, release update a week after. But what people want is communication. Like, just say what your plan is. Uh, there was a game recently, I can't remember what it is, they gave out a yearly update. So, when January hit, I think, or maybe early February, they said we're gonna have four big, big updates. So like, I'm just giving random uh, things like, first quarter, it will be, you know, PVP, second quarter, two new maps, third quarter, we're adding, you know, 11 more units and four more buildings. And then the last one, we're adding, I don't know, loot boxes, just saying random stuff. So like, you know, even though they're only gonna release four updates, you know what's coming and you know what you can expect. That's the problem. Companies don't do that. They're just silent and people get frustrated because of it. That's why games fall apart because you're playing the same thing over and over and you don't know when that update is gonna be. It's no bueno. You need communication. Okay. Um, so we had a bully went uh, pool first, trying to deny the CC. Yepin did an SCP scout, so he saw uh, the shenanigans coming, kept the Reaper home, even went to stay proud of putting CC in the main base. Uh, this is not so much for the pull first, like Ling, it's more for if, if Bulia follows it up with Roaches. Meanwhile, back at his base, he's going for uh, third hatch, which is pretty standard. When you go pull first, you can get that third base super, super easy uh, because the Reaper will be uh, defending. But yeah. We'll see what happens this game. And by the way, for the clan war today, I'm gonna give you guys um, not full lineup names of the players, but I'm gonna give you uh, races. So we're gonna have two Terran and two Zergs on uh, Beast Voice. And we have three Zergs and a Protoss on Pig Pan. Or Pig Steam. I want to call it Pig's team, but I don't want to say my team. This feels wrong. Um, but yeah, we'll see how the games turn out. Court was actually supposed to play first, but he had internet issues. So hopefully they get resolved until the end, or we're going to be in a, a little bit of trouble. A little Viking here, picking off an Overlord. Very nice. Getting a medank as well. So it seems this is gonna be a medevac drop in the main base, following up with a four hellbat run to the third is what I'm guessing. This is the build I use quite often on my stream as well. So maybe that's where Yepin got it from. Maybe not. Don't know. But uh, he should be dropping. Yeah, there we go. There are the hellions going. There's the four hellions on the third. You can also pair up this and go like 8 Hellbats in the third, but I always love to split, you know, 4-4 four, four because it gives Zerg more work to do. 
Yeah, so this is looking like the build that I like to do very often. So third base, two more factories, producing Hellion still, Viking clearing up stuff. Uh, double gas and natural. So he should be adding... Oh, his armor is uh, actually late. I don't know if he... Yeah, he definitely forgot it. Because he should have an armor at this point. But actually, maybe... Maybe... This is the way he plays, so... Trying to do a run by here. Not gonna work. Loses a Hellion, pops some Lings. Oh, there's actually not many units here. But of course, when you play Terran, like this is what you see, right? So you can't really just, you know, run in and get wrecked. Uh, but Fulia playing safe, having Roaches, uh, it's pretty hard to do anything with Hellions against Roaches. Fulia actually, oh, he has a sport here. Okay, so just no spore in the third, but playing pretty safe, droning up like a madman, like a mad lad. And we'll see what uh, Yepin decides to go for. I think he should definitely try to drop again, like attacking the third with Hellions against Roaches, even if they go Hellbats, is not really going to work. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, killing creep is fine, but he should try to do more with the medevac. Okay, so he's gonna follow this up with two Thors, two Medivacs, and then more Hellbats, and then he's gonna do another big push. Because that's what he's gonna do. And then from here on out, you should be adding two more factories, uh, starting 1-1 one, one with Mech, and then just going straight into Siege Tank production and not stop at all. And yeah, we'll see We'll see how both players handle the, uh, the mid game. There's another Medivac. Uh, does he? Oh, this medevac is alive, so he only needs to make one. He doesn't need more. I think uh, he missed a little bit of opportunity to do a drop here. Could have definitely uh, killed this overlord with the viking that's chilling here. And then give himself like a free path to there, but... You know. Alright, uh, there are the two Thors with that dank new skin. So many Hellbats, and will Bullia be ready for this? And I think he, he... I mean, he looks ready. He has a lot of... How many roaches? Eight roaches? Hmm. We'll see. 60 drones. So not, not fully droned up. Not up to 70 drones quite yet. Uh, definitely needs to pop a few more drones for this phase, but uh, we'll see how the, uh, the push will be executed. So he scans, sees units. Is he gonna go through? Nope. Um, sometimes when you see it, there's a lot of units, what you can also do is what uh, Yepin is doing. Just go around, drop in the main base, keep your aliens on this side so you can kind of, you know, try to do attack on the, uh, on the third as well as drop in the main. Because actually Thor drops, uh, he's already spotted. If he cleared this with the, um, Hellion, he could have dropped in the main and actually Thor drops are super hard to deal with early game because you don't really have any units that are gonna destroy the uh, the Thor you know so you always kind of lose something against Zerg and you shouldn't kill the Thors you should just chase them away unless the Terran miss micros but uh we'll see oh 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 he's not paying attention uh oh he's not paying attention Dead. yeah that that should not happen but like I said, if Terran miss micros or doesn't pay attention, you kind of get wrecked. He saves the one Thor. Oh, 16! Oh my god, 18 drones! Oh my god, I completely missed that. Jesus Christ. The barbecue, the, the, the pig is now the bacon. Damn. That was, uh... That was juicy. Loses the Thor, though, so... I mean, killing 18 drones is pretty huge, but he did lose the two Thors. If, if you uh, killed 18 drones and not lost any of the Thors or the Metabacks, I would say he's in really, really good position. I mean, he still is, but yeah. I think this is the time where, like, if you do that much damage, you can do a push, like a very slow push with tanks. Because um, 
this is what, what like when i coach people this is what a lot of people run into the, like this problem of they do damage but they don't do anything after that so they're like oh look i killed you know 20 drones and i still lost the game and i checked the replay and the guy literally didn't move at all and then you know zerg just re drone and, and killed him after so you gotta put pressure and keep attacking the zerg and not let him get back that uh, drone count up Okay, so Yepin actually does not know the army's here. He sees it with the watchtower. He sees it, but does he see it? Oh my god. Uh-oh, uh-oh, he needs to, he needs to put hellbats- Oh my god, that's a disaster. He needed hellbats on this side to protect the siege things. They get absolutely wrecked. Oh my god, the Bane- The Bulia Banelings destroy everything. They also have plus two weapons. That's pretty sick for them. Siege tanks completely misrallied. Yikes. And this now went from looking good to yikes, basically. I mean, four base, but the Zerg is on five. This <laughs> siege tank run by. Uh, Zerg is on five. He is producing one ghost at a time and getting a nuke. But yeah, he's, he's going to need to do something uh, pretty good to come back into this one. Actually, Bulia's um, hive is really, really late. So, if Bulia had uh, vipers on the way, I would say the game's kind of over. But because he doesn't have vipers on the way, uh, Yepin still has a chance unless he loses this base. Oh my god, never mind. He's screwed. He's dead. These hormones are going to do so much. There are no hellbats to tank for these tanks. Uh, he tried to do a run by here, which did not work. Yeah, no hellbats, so the tanks are gonna go down. And the first game, we're going to the uh, to the bacon boys. Fully has pretty good creep threat. I mean, he sees everything that's going on on the, uh, on the map, so there's no real way for him to take some severe damage from even Hellion run the vice because he has uh, queens here close by, has some spines. He's, uh, he's good. Yep, and losing the third. He's gonna stick around, he's gonna rebuild the fourth, but I think uh, if Vulia just makes like another 50 supplies foremost, he doesn't need to do anything. He's gonna win the game just with foremost. But, um, yeah, he doesn't see this. Does Vulia see him though? Yeah, he's, he's just setting up defenses, I guess, because he killed the third, so he doesn't want to lose a lot of drones. Yikes. Again, three units. Picks up some things, picks up some Hellions. The Hydra Bane train coming in. Picking up some more things. Zerg is coming from the uh, south side. And that boy is... I mean, <laughs> yep, in my hole, but for how long? What are the upgrades like? 2 2 versus 2 2 1. Soon to be 3 2 1. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna be a slow death. Look at this. These things are about to get wrecked. 1, 2, Three, four, five, six. And that will be it, boys. Game number one goes to Pig Pan. Um, let's pick our next player. He threw through that game nastily. I mean, you have to pre-split siege things. You can't siege them up all in one spot. And also, he went away to way too far with the hellbots. Your hellbots need to be along with the siege things. So that was, uh, I mean, he was definitely in a better position. 
but the attack was uh, botched completely. Especially after not seeing the... Um, like, not seeing the opponent army, so when he scanned the front, he didn't see any units, so he should have been more careful. But instead he kind of like just went in with the Hellbats and he got crushed from behind. But that's that's kind of mech. I mean, if, if you have your tanks alone, they're going to get destroyed absolutely. And, yeah, can't do much about it. If you fail a big push like that with mech, you're pretty much dead. There's no recovering. Like, unless Zerg then, you know, follows it up with losing another 30 drones, you're probably not gonna come back. You would need to do something massive to, uh, to come back. Well, he is Bulia. I mean, he's Master, but... Master 3 boy. But Bulia's uh, early defense was very good. Didn't take any damage. Had queens in position, had roaches in position. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's your job as a Terran to put the pressure and to make something happen. And it's Zerg's job to, well, prevent that. Okay, in the top left, from Pigpan, we have the red Zerg once again, Bulia. And from the bottom right, we have the blue Terran, Stanny. Stanny is my co-op carry lord. Carries me every single time because he's that good. Uh, so the score, I don't have the scoreboard for this one, but the score is 1 0 for Pickpin, and again, it's a best of seven match where the format is the all kill one. Okay, so we'll see. This is a ZVZ. Stanny picked the smallest map in the current map pool. We'll see what he does. Stanny is actually not someone that plays... Uh, he is master, but he said that he's pretty much playing only co-op recently. So we'll see how we'll see how he does over here. Oh, he went hatch first, and Bulia is going for cheeky cheeky pull first. With no gas. So this is going to be... Uh, this build in ZVZ, you're not supposed to kill your opponent, you're supposed to completely cancel the hatch first build and kind of be safe if you play against, you know, one base all or something like that. Oh, blue t did I say blue Terran standing? I meant blue Zerg. My bad. My bad. Okay, so the Lynx arrived. Stanny has nothing over there. He's going to need to pull some drones if he wants to keep this hatch alive. He's going to need to pull a lot of drones, like 7 8 drones, plus all the Zergens to try to defend this. Because if he loses the hatch, uh, all that Bullia will do is play defense. Ah, oh, that hatch is dead. Yeah, that's it. He's just going to let it go. Let it go, let it go. Nice. No bueno. I thought he might just give up the hatch and like wait for speed and do a, a, a huge counter. But he kind of just uh, attacked with 6 zerglings into 10, 12, lost everything. So this is going to be a very, very difficult comeback. Uh, Bullia's build literally uh, is, is kind of like safe, but I mean not kind of, it is safe. But also at the same time if your opponent goes hatch first, you're not over committing because you don't have speed. But you get your uh, natural very fast, so now what he's going to try to do is just defend. I think if he had like a spine here, or maybe just... Oh yeah, he needs both queens on the ramp. Because uh, Stainy can perhaps still win if he just... Ah, oh, there's so many Zerglings. If he had like the, the you know, 6-8 more that he lost earlier, he could have actually just done a run by into the main base, but... Like this, it's going to be very, very tough to win. He's going to try re-expand. But... I don't know. Fulia doing the smart thing. No more running by. And 
Stain is just making more and more Zerglings. I mean, yeah, the problem is Overlord sees this. Like, he, he knows it's coming. So, yeah, he's gonna definitely need to be lucky to enter the main base. Ah, uh, he's not even attacking, he's trying to run in, and that's not gonna work. That will not work, boys. That will not work whatsoever, and that would be the game. Yeah, if he had Banes, maybe. I mean, he could have just ran Banes into Lings, but yeah. That will not work. Ah, oh, he's making Bane Nest now, but <laughs> it's a little bit late for that. Because uh, Bully has Roach Horn already. I think he's going to be popping some Roaches now. Yeah. Rough game. Rough game. What's the work account? Work account, I mean, yeah, it, it's sad. Like, yeah. 24 against 12. I mean, Stanley needs like a, a miracle to win this. Because Bully also sees this. Like, it's literally right there, so he knows what's coming. So now he's gonna put roaches to block and pull the zerglings back, and that's it. There's also spine, there's transfuses, there's gonna be three transfuses soon. Almost four. Again, if he had all those zerglings he lost previously, he could have uh, he could have won this, but yeah, kind of bleeding out units throughout the whole game. He will not make it possible for him to uh, come back into this one. G to the G boys. And GG is called once again. So Pig Pen leading two. Okay, I'm asking Cord if he can play. Uh, earlier, like I mentioned in the first game, he had some lag issues, so I'm gonna see if they're resolved and if he can uh, if, if he can play. Bully, <laughs> yeah, bullying uh, Beastie Boys. Let me message Cord on Discord because it's FK. First two matches don't count warm up. Warm up. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Warm up cappuccino. Uh, okay. Um, Syed, you will be playing next, considering our fourth player is um, gone. Let me try to find a replacement meanwhile. Four players per team? Yes. The problem is two players from my team are missing. Or one is having internet problems, the other one is missing. So, yeah. I'm not... He kicked me by by accident. I think he wanted to kick the other guy. I think he wanted to kick Stanny from uh, lobby, but he ended up kicking me.
Okay, boys. Found a replacement, so that's good. We have Excite against Bullia right now. We'll see what happens. Excite said uh, his uh, worst matchup is ZVZ. So we'll see. We'll see if he can handle the Zergling Heat. Okay, in the bottom right, we have the guy that is up 2-0 for his team. The Red Zerg. Bullia. As someone said in the chat, Bully A. In the top left, we have Orange Zerg for Cutie Club. It is Syad. Okay, so we'll see what happens with this game. Excited was just uh, watching, so he knows what uh, Bullia did. The last game, but you know, Bullia probably smart enough to not do the exactly same build against, you know, different uh, same race opponent next game. So he's gonna go for hatch first, and Xayad will be also going for hatch first. Boom and boom. We got a, a macro, you know, this is a Zerg macro game for now. Because you never know how long it will last. They might just mess up Zerglings and Banelings and die. In my language, Bulive, Bulive means potato. Nice. I need to hear, uh, how do you say potato in your guys' language? That's what we're here for. That's what matters. Oh, by the way, I added two new things, like uh, extensions on my stream. They should be under the stream. So, for example, one of them is viewer geolocation, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, it shows, like, where your viewers are from. Like, uh, it shows top 3, 6, 9, 12. shows top 15 countries watching your stream. Which I was like, okay, it's interesting, it's interesting. Good to know, good to know. Okay, so, so far, uh, pretty, pretty much resident sleeper. Nothing really happening, both getting speed. Side mining the gas, so does uh, Bully as well. So we'll see if they're gonna go. I mean, the standard thing to do is kind of like make a couple of Zerglings try to scout your opponent and then get a third. And then you can pick if you're going to play defensive or you're going to play aggressive. But in pro games, it's always like poking. Not necessarily super aggressive, but make a round of Zerglings. You know, get some Banes. Try to do some damage. And yeah. Papas is potato. Nice. <laughs> Kartoffel. All those names. Do you guys remember how you say it in uh, in uh, Serbian? Did I teach you well the important things in life? How to say potato in Serbian? Okay, so just as I was saying, both getting the third, both made made like two four zerglings to scout the opponent, and uh, both getting thirds. So we'll see if they're gonna be aggressive. We see Bulia making more links. Meanwhile, Xayat is playing a little bit more defensive. And yeah, Bully adding even more. Oh, 20 lings! Yikes. Okay, now is Xai going to see this? Let's check his vision. Does he see this? He sees it on a map. He sees the Zerglings. What does he do? He adds more Zerglings. Adds more Bings. Very nice. Good response. Puts the Bainling there. Very nice. So there's the Overlord. The Overlord knows. Oh, where does the Bainling go? Uh, I don't know. Awkward. Injects. Meanwhile. Bully on this side, being a sneaky snake, going for it. Roachhorn coming up. Oh my god, get hyped, boys. If we lose this one, this is going to be 3 0 for Pigpen. And uh, then we're going to only need one more nail in the coffin to be pronounced 100% dead. 100%. Okay, so this is the, uh, the Zergling Baneling war I told you guys about earlier. Alright, nice trade for Xayah. Three Banes for four. And behind this, again, it's not like an all-in. Uh, Bulia just made 12 more drones. So... Oh, 
so Xan needs to be careful. Like you don't want to overcommit to this, because you might get baited into making unit like way more units than you need, and then you're behind on drones, and then your opponent plays defensive and you lose the game. So Zergling Bailing is very interesting uh, thing. <gasps> okay. Mine. Never mind. Okay, so is Xai going to be aggressive now? He's getting more gas, but he needs to. Uh, he's making some drones now. Interesting. Fully getting the Roach Warren. What are you guys saying? Uh, wow, you guys forgot how you say potato in Serbian. Um. In my language, beastie cutie equals potato. Very nice. Nice. Well played. I like it. Okay, so Bully's gonna go counterattack. He does not want to fight the army. And there are no Banelings here. There's some Zerglings. He needs to get Banes there, though. Or he's about to get Shrek. Did he not see the unit? Yeah, I don't think he saw the unit. Meanwhile, Bulia prepared. He knows that this was coming. Oh my god, we're gonna have a ZVZ base trade, boys. That's what we're here for. ZVZ base trade, resident sleeper. Oh my god, the base! Oh my god! Yikes. And that will be a uh, game. So Bulia is bullying us quite hard right now. It's going to be 3-0. And we'll be moving into game number four. Yikes. The hatch goes down. King of the bullies. Yikes. The hatch goes down and so does our hope of actually having the chance in this game. Yeah. Bulia murdering us. I mean, excited, you know, not giving up, getting the third base once again, but uh, it's one of those things that in ZVZ, it's kind of like the numbers game, more so than the uh, skill shop game with spells or something like that. If you, you know, if you have 10 roaches, opponent has 20, there's not much you can do to win that. You're pretty much dead. And yeah, there's even queens hunting for overlords. Or one queen. Predator queen. And yeah. I mean, Xan has more roaches here. So he's gonna win this fight. But the Zerglings, boys. The Zerglings stream in. They're biting the roaches in their butt. And getting the damage done they need. Sign actually might hold. Will it? No. Will he? Maybe. I mean, he holds, which is very nice. But he's down 13 drones and a base. And a lot of units. He's fighting his little heart out. But uh, in the end, like they say, it doesn't even matter. Rick. This is the this is the part where the caster's like, oh my god, what can he do to come back into the game? Nothing. There's nothing. He's dead. He is dead. G G boys and pig pen is up three and the zero. Very nice by them. Okay, last player. going to be dark this is dark straight from korea imported to play in the clan war no, i'm joking 
uh, Dark, Dark will be playing the last game. The Terran player, Masters 2. So he needs to win every game from here on out. Okay? Every single game. That's gonna be pretty hard. Okay? And kind of knowing, like playing Clan War and knowing you need to win every game to actually, you know, for your team to win is kind of rough. Crumper equals potato. No, it's crumpir with uh, instead of e and an i. And there you go. That's how you do it. Why are you drinking mashed potatoes, Ripple? <laughs> this is a cup. Come on, it's not a bowl. It's a cup. Nice little cup. It's coffee. Didn't see that run by? They, uh, the Zerglings ran past their units, by the way. You should check the replay. It was pretty fun. Or funny, not fun. Funny. That's a bull? No. That's a cup. Okay. Okay. All right. In the bottom right, we have our red Zerg, Bolia from Big Pen, who's up 3-0 all on his own, wrecking everything there is. And in the top left, we have a potato called Yellow Terran Dark that needs to win four games in a row to give us the chance to hold the trophy in the end. But can he do it? I don't know. It's going to be hard. Um, so we'll see how his TVZ is because Pig Pen has three Zergs and a Protoss. So unless his TVZ is really good, he's screwed. He is very, very much screwed. Okay, let's see what happens. Polia going for cheeky pull first. Cheeky, che cheeky, breaky. Okay, so he's gonna go pull first. He's gonna probably run some zerglings, try to bamboozle the, the, the command center. Getting the natural hatch. And, uh, yeah, see barracks finishing right up. I'm gonna go make the command center right here. He is not SV scouting, so he will not know that the Zerg is going to bamboozle him. Is this Dark the Pro Gamer? No. This is Dark the Potato Gamer. Very different. Very different. They're both gamers, but a little bit different in their field of work. Or line of work. Okay, so this was not a gas first build. This was a Reaper or Brax Gas Reaper into a Marine. So that's actually pretty good. He's gonna have the Marine to deny these two Zerglings, which is very nice. And Bulia being a cheeky little sh little schmuckster, going for Roach Warren. So Dark needs to scout this. If he does not scout this, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so he sees Hatch for, or Pull first. He's going back, because he doesn't know how many Zerglings there are. He needs to be careful with this marine boy. Okay, he's actually adding a, a bunker. That's pretty good. So, I mean, he doesn't need to scout the roach warren if, if there's a bunker. Because that's the whole point of scouting, so you can make a roach warren. Okay, Reaper is back. Bops that zergling. Is, uh, wow. Is this innovation or is this dark? See what I did there? Okay, so... Reaper needs to move across the map. He needs to scout the follow-up. He needs to try and see what the opponent is doing. He's gonna get some Hellions, I'm guessing. Yeah, Hellions. 
And the Reaper is just chilling. Oh, yikes. He sends the Reaper now, but that's a little bit too late. He only has one Marine as well. Look at his vision. Oh, he sees Ravager morphing. What does he do? What does the potato do? Pull some workers. Okay, Cyclone, I like it. Make the make another one. There you go. Swap the tech lab. Put it there. Put the thing there. Make a Banshee. The Ravagers are in. Throwing some Biles. What do we see from Bulia though? Okay, this is not the full all-in. This is just a light commitment. Okay, this is just four Ravagers. I'm surprised this one isn't a Ravager either. As well, not either. Uh, so he's just gonna spam Ravager piles, try to kill some SCVs. So far, dark, sharp as an arrow. Holds that easy. Easy. Is this the beginning of comeback? That's what I'm wondering. That's what we're looking for. Is dark the guy to put us back on the board, give us a point or two or five or ten? Okay, pulling SCVs, I don't know about that. He gets the job done. I like it. Why am I doubting the, the Dark God? Kills, fries the Ravager. Doesn't even kill it. Like, sets it on fire. Loses two SCVs. These SCVs need to go back to mining. Not not chill there. Go, go back to mining. He's too focused on the uh, Ravager. Okay, the SCVs. Okay, go back to mining. Going for Banshee. Meanwhile, Bulia, what is he doing? Another queen. I had three queens right now. He's making some roaches. Whenever you face something like this, you need to push across the map as a Terran. You can't just sit in your base. Because look what's happening. Pula is just droning up like a mad lad. He sees like, oh, your units are here. Okay, let me just drone up. And that's the, another mistake Terrans make so often. He defended, and he's ahead at this point because of it. Because Zerg is the same drone count as Terran, and he just made like 12 drones. So, he if he pushed across the map, he could have killed the third base, or put a lot of pressure and forced the Zerg to make a lot of uh, units. But he's just chilling back, maybe he's scared that uh, he doesn't like die to something. But yeah, a yikes moment for sure. He's adding more factories, but there's no third. Which is... Um, Interesting. Oh my god, no, why? Yikes. That Banshee gets tricked. And just like that, even though Bully's opener didn't work out, he's pretty much back into the game. Droning up freely. Again, he has no units. He has two Roaches and a Ravager. That's his whole army. So, if Terran pushed with this, the Zerg wouldn't die. But he would make units, which equals in less drones. Yeah. Dark scanning. Sees double Evo. Sees Lair coming up. Double Armory coming up. Very nice. Will he push out? And when he pushes out, will it be too late? That's the question. That is the question. Okay, gonna bop this overlord. Gets a freebie. Was the cloak cancelled? No, the cloak finished. Wait, so he made one bench? Huh? Yeah, he made one bench. Interesting choice. He is playing really scared. Like, you can see it by his siege tank positioning. He is playing uh, really, really defensive. Excited has no, uh, excited, sorry. Bully has no units. He's still on, this is his whole army. And he is, from being very far behind, he's now ahead in economy. And freely taking two Hydras, getting more Evo Chambers. And the game's looking good for him. What he should definitely do is get a fourth. Keep the creep spread going, another skin going down. I mean, that doesn't see anything. He just sees more roaches popping. I'm not sure why he's scanning, to be honest. Like, what? what is he looking for? You don't need to scan the Zerg at this point. You just make two Thors, you're safe against Muta, and then you just go full siege tank production. 
But I guess because he has no Thor's scanning, but scanning is always so random because, you know, he scans the natural, but what if the Spire was here? Can't really rely on uh, on the scans too much to, to win your games. Because more often than not, you're going to get bamboozled and uh, lo uh, lose the game. Clap, 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 clap. Okay, Overlord or Overseer coming in here. Confirming indeed it is mech. His forces are under attack. Hellion gets destroyed. And yeah, we'll see what uh, dark timing is. Maybe he's gonna go for just a big, big 2 2 push. I'm not sure. Everyone has different play styles. Like, what he's doing right now is not necessarily wrong, because he might still win off of a big push, but he could have dealt pretty much game ending damage earlier. Uh, scanning for army baby hidden tech. The thing is, you don't. That, that, that's what I mean. Uh, in TVC, you don't need to scan for the army. I mean, now he scans, he sees like this, so I guess that's pretty good. But you don't need to scan the army. The reason for that is you make two Thors, you're safe against Muta. And then against everything else, you want to have Siege Tank Hellbound. That's why it doesn't matter. Uh, if you scan the Hive timing, I mean, that's that makes sense, right? You want to know where the Vipers are coming. But other than that, yeah. Nine Swarmos coming out. And yeah, I don't, I don't think this is going to work for Dark. Especially if he doesn't Siege. Oh my god, that's a very, very, very late Siege. The units coming in, oh, not all the siege tanks are even sieged up. Swarmos coming in, okay, cleans it up, kind of, but there's more locusts coming. You need to put Hellbats in front. There you go, okay. Can he, oh, no, he, can't. Uh, he should just go back for now, get some more units. I would have liked if he waited for plus two weapons, at least. Plus two armor, I mean... Not super needed, but plus two weapons at least. And just like uh, Yepin earlier, he gets caught off, uh, caught off guard. Yepin was sieged, but completely out of position. But Dark uh, just, yeah, not sieging up in time. Losing probably more than he should. But game will continue. We have Vipers in the way. Very nice. Hive, obviously, uh, is done. And... We'll see where the game goes from here. He's adding more factories. So he, there's always an option, by the way, when you play mech. You're either going to go up to like eight factories in one starport and just kind of like brute force. This is what Gumiho used to do quite a bit. Or you're going to go for like five factories, three starports, which is something I like to do because you can go into Ravens and, uh, you know, go into more spellcaster kind of gameplay. But he's going to go with a lot of factories. And just kind of brute force his way to the victory. But the game is not over yet. There is still chance. The fourth base landing. Swarm boys are here. Some Thors are here. Cleaning some creep. Does he know about these units? He, he definitely does, yes. He needs to siege up. Siege up, siege up, siege up. Ah, he's not siege up. And his army is completely split. Yikes. Oh, the tanks are here. That was my uh, windows. Okay. Stays alive. Swarmos do survive on the right side, making five more. I like when uh, when I play Zerg against Terran Mech. I, I like to have like 10, 15 Swarmos because I think there's just no reason not to make them. You don't want your whole army to be Swarmos, but making like 10, 15 is always so good. And it forces the Terran in this really, really awkward position. Zergling run by over here. Nabbing some SCVs. Oh my god, and Dark's not reacting. Yikes. 15 SCVs go down. Yikes, boys. Not looking good. Swarmos coming in once again. Vipers on the field. He needs to transform the uh, Thor attack to the single target one. But the Thors get caught. Yikes. And now the soup never lies and yeah now he's uh 
I mean, he, he it's going from bad to worse. 23 SCVs lost. He actually doesn't have enough workers to saturate these four bases. And Bully are doing a really good job with just run bys foremost and just kind of defending. He did take a big risk in just mass droning, but you know, it's on your opponent's uh, it's on your opponent to, to punish that rather than, you know, you shouldn't do it because it's greedy. And Dark didn't punish, so we see the game that's happening right now. Swarmo's coming in. Again, super late siege. Getting crushed. He pulled the SCVs. I'm guessing it's, it's kind of like I need to do something at this point or I'm screwed. And he actually does pretty well, even with the late siege. Um, so... We'll see, there was no real surround. The Hydras were all here clumped up. Siege things powering through. Can he kill the Zerg before dying? Oh my god, the Vipers. Oh, that's actually huge. Now he might actually win off of this, even though he's behind in supply. Because the army, the army craft, army forces, he actually has more army. And this is mech, so... Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, more Hydras pop. But there's no Vipers, which is actually pretty, pretty huge. What he needs right now... Oh, these SCVs are not doing anything. Ah, he needs to siege up. Siege up. What he needs right now is Hellbats. He needs Hellbats to tank for the uh, for the tanks. To tank for the tanks, as people would uh, say. But can he do it? Ulya going in? Hydra's melting. Mech broken confirmed. Ten drones going down. Swarmos of still. Oh my god, wait, what? Dark, the mechanical god. I don't know how that happened. Um, yeah, like he was very behind. Like he lost, what was it, 20 something SCVs? Army, you can see the army graph. I mean, it went crazy. But then the mechanical engage wins in the end. But I guess, I mean, let's be honest. Every mech player hates Vipers, but without Vipers, that's what would happen. Uh, like, Hydras without Vipers are gonna do very bad against Siege Tanks. Like, they're gonna get crushed. And plus three Siege Tanks destroy everything there is. GG. Okay, Vormant, I remember this guy, he smashed us in Clan of War once, and then he, we smashed him in the next Clan of War. Vormant is a Protoss player, so we'll see if Dark can take the win. Because if Dark can take the win, that leaves him with two more Zergs in the enemy team. So, enemy team... AKA Pig Pan, because we're we're boys, beastie boys. Um, has two more Zergs, right? So if they switched it up and put a Protoss, they the Zergs might not want to face the Mech Terran, but we'll see. We'll see. I feel like uh, this is one of those things where the hardest match is now, because if he wins this, he gets two more Zergs, and obviously he did really well against Bullion now. In a game that I, I thought he lost, but maybe I'm a potato. I don't know. Like the last game was um, like one of those games where he was behind, or not behind. He was ahead from the start, but he didn't use that opportunity. So I thought the Zerg kind of came back into the game, but he stayed calm, he stayed collected. And bashed. Bashed the Zerg with some Mech D. Look what I have for after Clan War. Some uh, juicy banana to eat. Gotta stay hydrated. And you cannot be hungry. While gaming. Okay. Game number five. Game number five right now. We are down 3-1.
In the bottom left for Pig Pan, it is Warmint, the Protoss we have seen before. And then in the top right, it is. Oh my god, he's now blue. It is the Blue Terran Dark that took the last game, and he might be doing reverse all kill. Is it possible? Yes. Can he do it? Yes. Will he do it? I don't know. We'll see. That's why you gotta watch. We gotta stay and see. Okay, Vorman doing something that's very meta right now. Very normal thing. Uh, a month ago, this would be like, is this guy bronze? Why is he walling off on the natural against Terran? But actually, it became a, a norm and it's something that Protoss players should do. Because Terrans are doing a lot of Reaper expansion to reactor Hellion builds. And if you don't have your natural walled off, you're going to die. You're going to lose all your probes and you're going to have a really, really bad time. So... Vormint, obviously following the meta, knows what he's supposed to do. And we'll see what Dark decides to go for. Yep, it says, was the transition to Ghost bad? Should I stop doing that? You're asking the wrong questions. You didn't lose because of Ghost Transition. You lost because of different things. Uh, the harass... Like, you should, you should work on harassing better and on engaging. The Ghosts are, you know, they're late game. You, you don't need that. You gotta, you gotta start from beginning. You gotta learn how to walk to know how to run. So, you gotta improve your early game, your mid game, and then your late game. Because, as funny as it is, but you don't need your late game if you win in the mid game. So, yeah. The, I mean, there, there are many ways to play mech against Zerg. Um, you know, you can go ghosts. Sometimes they go ghosts. Sometimes they go ravens. Sometimes they go eight, eight factories. Um... So it, it's it's more of a, like a play style, I guess, rather than which one is better. Eight factories, for example, is better to kill the opponent very fast or be able to push. Ghosts are kind of like if you have good micro, good control, and you can actually control the ghosts. Uh, and then the ravens are like the super late game option. But yeah. Okay, so Dark going for uh, one of the newer builds, I would say. Uh, Marauders with concussive shells, where you get a he had a Reaper, right? Oh no, he went he went Marine into concussive shell. Okay. Oh, that's a, actually a cute build. I like that build. So uh, a Marine into concussive shell. Uh, a lot of Protosses do these kind of pokes, and you can just catch a Stalker or a Depth and just kill it. So good for him, but can he deal with this oracle? Does he even know what's going on? No, he has no idea. So he's she just SCV scouted here. Uh, Vormant, as you can see, is walling off, a little bit scared. Maybe he doesn't know what his opponent... Oh, he never saw the CC. Oh, Vormant is playing... Look, he's, he's trying to find the Marauders. Because he thinks he's about to get pushed, because he never saw the CC. And he's playing very defensive, but there are no Marauders to be found. It's it's an expand build. But is he going to have enough Marines for the Oracle? And he's going to have now. If the Oracle went straight to his base, he would have lost uh, quite a few things. No Oracle... No workers will ever be harmed by an Oracle. The wise words... Dustin Bratter. Oh, 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 Miss Micro on the Oracle! And Dark gets it. Okay, four SCVs for an Oracle. As a Terran, I would take that trade, honestly. 150 gas? 150, right? Yeah, 150 gas Oracle for four SCVs. I don't mind that at all. Work account 29 against 39, so that that's no bueno. But. The question is, can Vorman actually hold this stim push? Which Dark should already be across the map, moving out. 
Uh, I'm not sure why he's staying still defensive. Maybe he's like worried he's gonna die or something. But he should definitely be going across the map because he has stim, he has shields. And his factory is super late, so he can't really wait for factory to finish. Um, to move out, because that would be... Well, way, way too late. So we'll, we'll see what he decides to do. Uh, I like this build that he's doing, but the reason I don't like it at the same time is because you have no scouting. Like, he has no idea what's going on. He has no idea if this is 2 base all in, if this is Colossus follow up, if this is 3rd base, or anything else. So that might be the reason why he's chilling uh, back. But um, I'm worried that by the time he decides the time to push, it might be too late. Oh, actually, Vorman is doing an interesting thing. He's still making oracles. Third oracle coming up. Okay. Oh, he's actually gonna fight the marines. I mean, picks up some marines, gets out. It's just energy in the end, right? And yeah, darks. Dark is pretty much in the dark. <laughs> uh, has no idea what's going on. He's gonna go up to five barracks, getting the starport, getting the factory with the reactor. He's gonna do a swap, get some medanks out. But we're gonna find out if his uh, push is gonna be way, way, way too late. Way, way too late. We will see. I mean, he's fully saturated, pretty much. He, he needs to make two more SCVs and then he can stop for the natural. And then all that's left is for him to keep pushing on stop. I would like to see a reactor on the factory. And a missile turret here, because he saw that there is two oracles at least. I don't know if you realize... Oh, come on, you see the oracles! Additional. Nice. Kills two of them. Not bad. And Vorman is going for Charge plus Storm. Now, this is an interesting idea. Because... Interesting idea. Interesting uh, decision. He knows that the Terran is 2 base. So going Storm is actually very risky. But it might pay off. The reason for that is... If the Storm finishes and he lands a Storm like here... Sure, he wins the game. But if he misses one Storm, he might actually just straight up die. And that's why you usually... Oh my god, he's gonna... Pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. Nice! Wow. Look at Dark. With his little little micro. Very nice. So, if he misses a storm, does he even have High Templars? Oh man, he has no High Templars. So, Vormund might be taking way too hard. He made four oracles in total. He's going for storm and just charge loss and nothing else. And I think Dark will end up crunching this army. He needs to micro though, he needs to kite. He's just getting bashed right now. Kite, 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 kite. There you go. Oracle can join in the fight for a couple of seconds because he doesn't have a lot of energy. Okay, gets uh, pushed back. And also the double robo and the blink. Vorman is trying to get too many tech things at the same time, but he might be able to pull it off because he does have three base economy. Is he gonna go 40 natural? Oh my god, those, those five units are so overstimmed. Okay, unpowers that. He needs to... Ooh, feedbacks instead of storm. That's an interesting choice. I think the high tempers were also... Uh, almost have enough energy for the, uh, for the storms. The bio gets wrecked. And... Yeah, oh my god. He has so much money. He can warp in so many units. And... Uh, yeah, I think in the end, Dark did wait too, too long. And 2-2 two two is about to hit for the Protoss. So, yeah, that's going to be 1-1 one one Terran against 2-2 two two Protoss. Yikes.
I think if he micro a little bit better there, he could have taken on the charge slots a lot easier, but yeah. I mean, Warman is getting the fourth base. Does he even? I don't think he scouted that there's no third for Dark. But um, what? Uh, I was gonna say one thing he could try to abuse his drop, but Warman made a Phoenix, so that's kind of awkward, because. Even though he only made one, you don't know if there's going to be three more coming up. So you can't really just commit to drops. Oh, the Phoenix goes down. That was really nice. See, if you know there's no Phoenix, he would just drop again, but he doesn't know that. And he, you can't risk at this point to, to do that. Runs back. Kill the Zella. Oh, this is going to be very awkward. Oh, what are the skins? Okay, this is going to be very awkward. If somehow Dark gets to here and High Templars are lagging behind. Oh my god, there's so many High Templars. If he EMPs this, he has a chance. Oh, he scans. He sees. You got an EMP. Uh, EMP. Oh my god, disgusting EMPs. Kill that, kill that. Step, step, step. Ba, 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 that's actually a pretty huge pickoff. Picked up like six, seven high Templars with almost, well, not full, but he had two storms. Oh my God! Is this the hashtag throw? Another EMP. All the high Templars get wrecked, but the one, one versus two, two upgrades and overstim bio. He needs to heal up his bio. He needs to like. Oh my God! Yeah, he's gonna stim again, isn't he? Yeah, the, he, he is basically killing himself now with the drugs. That's why I don't do drugs, kids. Another two MPs. Very nice. Wait, can he actually do it? Another stem goes down. Take just sucking up those drugs. Nah, this, I think it's too many units. Yeah, yeah. Two, 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 too many. In the end doesn't even matter I mean dark is just very far behind on economy and also when you do these kind of pushes uh, advice for you guys if you play Terran make four medevacs and go into reactor liberators because at one point he had eight medevacs if he had four liberators that fight is completely different because Protoss is then forced to make stalkers which Protoss doesn't want to do at its point so there would be less charge lots less archons and then you can try, you know, do more damage that way. What is this this guy? But, um, yeah. He actually... Oh, wait. Oh, my God. He queued up both armor and weapons in one engineering bay. So now he would be 2-2 two, two upgrades, which... You know, he is behind, but maybe. But now he is 1-2 upgrades against soon-to-be plus 3 armor Protoss. That already has plus 3 attack. Yikes. Yikes. I mean, Vormin playing well. Getting a third, just defending. Now he's realizing, oh, I can actually be aggressive. Not much to say. He's super dead. He's a super duper dead. Oh, that EMP dodge. Very nice. And uh, Vorman splitting his high Templars, learned his mistake. Uh, and Dark only be only able to get two Archons, two uh, high Templars. With the EMP, but there's more storm to come. Yikes. I like how he's going to the third, but there's no third. He's like, wait, what? Have I been fighting the two base all this time? Let me get some more of those charge lots. Yummy. Yummy yummy in my protoss tummy. Yeah, the charge lots soon to be 332. They will not be stopped, boys. They will not be stopped. I am exit says dark. 
Good attempt, good attempt at the reversal kill, but in the end, Pigpen takes the Clanmore 4 to 1. Very nice. And this was the first all kill Clanmore I think we've had. Very nice. GG's. GG's, guys. Well played. And that will be it, boys. He tried his best. Uh, I think every game we had a chance to, to win, but there were always opportunities missed. And yeah, that's StarCraft.